This right here is Patrick Kane, a man who in his prime would torture the entire league with his godlike puck skills. Kane was an inch away from a breakaway. Pesci recovers on the back end, and Kane scores! Well, Kane dancing in! Kane scores! What a goal by Patrick Kane! Even after a hip resurfacing surgery, an operation that has historically ended NHL careers, this man is still elite. Back in 2010, the Hawks would run through the playoffs, all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. And as a Canucks fan, I have never been more triggered by a goal celebration in my life. In fact, this still pisses me off. You know how sometimes you just see someone's face and you just want to punt? Where this man would eventually score the most bizarre Stanley Cup clinching goal. As this also may be mad, as I am family friends with the Richards, but enough about me and my adolescent traumas stems from Patrick Kane, as this Hawks team was in the perfect position to make cup runs year after year. As Kane and Taves were both 21, Dustin Bufflin would come out of nowhere and was breaking the game with his size and clutch scoring. Duncan Keith and Seabrook were both in their mid-20s, both in contention for the Norris Trophy. So add in a guy like Marion Hossa into the picture, and this team was set to become a Dynasty. In 2013, we would see a lockout shortened season. But in that season, the Blackhawks were on pace for the best season since the implementation of the salary cap. And to nobody's surprise, they would breeze their way through round one. They would run into Datsuk in round two. Brent Seabrook, of all people, would score the game seven overtime goal. And comes Seabrook with a shot. He and in the Stanley Cup Finals, my goodness, they would do it again. as they would win their second Stanley Cup in a four-year span. And at this point, the Blackhawks were on top of the hockey world. Except, when you are this dominant, winning two cups in a short time frame, the roster full of underdog players who are playing far above their cap hit, you are inevitably going to run into cap issues. Even if you're a bottom six player, if you're a Stanley Cup champion, these players will demand a premium. And as a result, the Hawks would see key departures and players like Bufflin and Andrew Ladd, Victor Stahlberg, Dave Boland, Michael Froelich, Ben Eager, Chris Versteeg, shout out Northside Lethbridge. I have almost gotten stabbed there, but and yes, many of these players were bottom six, if not depth players, but they were key pieces to their cup wins. And as we know, depth is needed for Stanley Cup runs, and all of their success would lead to the Hawks being cap strapped. In 2014, Chicago would be knocked out in the conference finals. And finally, in the 2015 NHL season, we would see a pack. Patrick Kane injury, a history altering hit that has led to the most debated topic in hockey today. The brand new McDavid Collector's Box has just hit the stores, or you have great odds of pulling a McDavid the Cup Auto, or perhaps a 1516 Series 1 tin, which keep in mind sells for about 600 bucks. The same tin, you could potentially pull a McDavid Young Guns rookie. Link is down below. The Blackhawks in 2015 would see their first real spell of adversity because in a matchup against the Florida Panthers, on a seemingly harmless play, Patrick Kane would get into a foot race with Petrovic. Kane would gain the clear advantage. Patrick Kane! Oh, oh, a bad, oh, what a play from behind! Terrible move by Petrovic! Petrovic would shove Kane's hip, causing him to crash into the boards. And as a result, Patrick Kane would break his clavicle, or collarbone, which meant that he would be out for the rest of the season. And this was a massive blow for the Hawks. As they were dependent, Patrick Kane carrying the Hawks with their depleted depth. And well, this injury took place nearly one week before the 2015 trade deadline, where the Blackhawks would come to a monumental realization. They would realize that his cap space wouldn't count against the cap. Huh. 
interesting. In a dire situation, Patrick Kane getting injured might actually prove to be beneficial. Because of this injury, they would realize that his salary would not count against the cap in the playoffs. Thus, they would make two key trade deadline acquisitions, as they would acquire Antoine Vermette from the Coyotes and Kimo Timonen from the Flyers. And what do you know? Patrick Kane, Showtime, was well rested and ready to play in Game 1 of Round 1. And well, the Blackhawks would breeze their way to the Stanley Cup Finals, where they would defeat the Tampa Bay Lightning, as the acquisition of Antoine Vermette was the difference between winning a Stanley Cup and getting sent home packing. And this is no joke, as Vermette would score three series-deciding game-winning goals. No! Another he scores! Vermette! It's over! And here's the thing, during a prior CBA negotiation, the concept of cap circumcision of calf circumvention was brought up to all of the teams, as it was discussed whether or not the salary cap should apply during the playoffs. And after a lot of back and forth discussion, Ken Holland would step up to the plate, where he would explain how detrimental it could be for a team if they were unfortunately cursed with a bunch of injuries, where they would be stuck with a bunch of AHL call-ups during the playoffs. And this idea would speak volume where they would decide that there would be no salary cap in the playoffs. But little did they know that this decision would have major consequences. The Blackhawks gaining cap space due to the Patrick Kane injury would open up a massive can of worms. Because keep in mind, at this point, the salary cap was less than 10 years old, and teams didn't fully grasp what they could and couldn't do when it comes to long-term injury reserve. So adding the fact that the Hawks would win a Stanley Cup as a direct result of this loophole would cause a massive domino effect. Now, this is my opinion, and I am not saying this as a matter of fact, but to me at least, it seems like teams have gone, huh, one of my players is injured, he can probably play, so why don't we time the surgery to take place before the deadline, so that we can load up heading into playoffs. Because as a result, and I kid you not, after Tampa won the cup in 2020, which led them to being cap-strapped, similar to Chicago's situation, Nikita Kucherov would conveniently go on long-term injury reserve. And again, was he actually injured? Absolutely. But this timing was impeccable, as it allowed Tampa to make key trades at the deadline, where they would win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, as Tampa was technically, and I kid you not, $18 million over the salary cap. And when you consider, the players tend to take a 10, 20% discount with a team like Tampa that doesn't have state tax. We are now talking 25 to $30 million in savings for the playoffs. And what world can a Canadian team compete with this? Do you know how much depth you can create with 30 million in extra cap space? Well, apparently Stanley Cup winning depth. In 2022, we heard hear rumors of Vegas trying to acquire Jack Eichel, but there was an assumption that Vegas would have to give up a major roster piece due to the salary cap. Except Mark Stone would go on long-term injury reserve, where they would go on to win a Stanley Cup. And this season, it has become the battle of cap circumvention, as Mark Stone would receive a timely surgery, and Vegas had 15 million in extra cap space heading into the deadline. And this cap space would allow Vegas to acquire monster pieces. Thomas Hurdle, Noah Hannafin, Anthony Mantha, pieces that will bolster their depth tenfold. But in what world does it make sense that a player goes down with a season ending injury? And boom! Hey guys, I'm now rested for game one. Because if we take a look of three of the four past champions, you will notice a big trend. They are in a place with no state tax and have routinely taken advantage of the LTIR loophole. So the question is, how do we even fix this? As I agree that it could be detrimental to have an entire season lost due to a key injury. But maybe that player can't come back until like game three and not just show up for game one as there has to be some kind of middle ground here as it's crazy to look back and realize that all of this is happening due to the Patrick Kane injury. Without a doubt, it would have happened eventually, but Patrick Kane getting injured has single-handedly changed NHL history. Can you think of a way to fix this loophole? Comment down below. The McDavid Chase box is still in stock, so check it out down below. And as always, thanks for watching.